You probably already know that the new iPad Pro is thinner, it's lighter, it's brighter, it's faster, and overall better than the last iPad. I've been playing with it for the last few days, and these are my first impressions. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals, and this is not a review. I've been using the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil Pro and even the iPad Air for the last five days or so, and I've been working really hard to get a review done for five o'clock today. But around noon, my time here, I decided to just scrap the whole thing. So this is not a review. This is a first impressions video, and the main reason why is I've been running into bugs. I've been uh, using the Apple Pencil Pro, I have been using a lot of beta software. Um, I am not getting a full experience of what you're going to experience when this goes live to the customer in a few days. And in a review, I talk about my experience using a product. And if that experience doesn't match up to what the average customer is going to experience, then it's not a very good review. And I've decided I just need more time. Makes sense? I hope so. But still, I've been using it and I have a lot of thoughts on it. And I want to share some of those first impressions while I am still testing testing this thing out. And so the first thing I want to talk about is the screen because I think this is the biggest update to this new iPad Pro. With a lot of products, when the screen is better than the last version, I take them both out, I put them next to each other, and I'm like, okay, when they're sitting next to each other, I can tell that this is better than the last version. But if they're not sitting next to each other, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't really think that's the case here. This screen gets significantly brighter than the mini LED display that was on the 2022 iPad iPad Pro. And looking at this next to the LCD display that is on the Air, it is a very big difference. When I first got them, I set up the iPad Pro and then I thought, you know what, it's a beautiful day outside. Why don't I go and set up the iPad Air outside on my back porch, you know, in the shade of my umbrella. And that's where I really noticed it. You can crank up the brightness and definitely tell that, hey, this does get a little bit brighter than the old iPad. You could look at them next to each other and say, hey, the colors here, especially some of the reds and the pinks that I was looking at were punchier than they were on the old iPad. But once you get it outside, you can see this OLED display really does get significantly brighter. And it's one of those things that you can actually use, at least in the shade, if you're working outside. I was also comparing this to the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra, which has an OLED screen, it gets pretty bright. Again, the iPad Pro does get brighter, not like hugely brighter, but whatever coding Apple is using by default on this screen is a lot less glossy. And because of that, it feels a lot brighter if you're using this in sunny situations. There's also a nano texture glass option that is available for these iPads. I did not get one of those to review, but I have ordered one. Unfortunately, it's not gonna be here until like mid-June. So it's gonna be a while. Apple does not advertise that as something to draw on. They advertise that as uh, a reflect anti-reflective coating. But I'm curious, can you draw on it? Like, how does it hold up over time? Is it easy? Is it hard to clean? So I have a lot of questions. It might be a really nice drawing textured surface. I love drawing on a textured surface. Subscribe in about a month. I'll have a review on that. This is a dual OLED display. So what they're actually doing is taking two old uh, displays and putting them on top of each other. So they're not just turning on one pixel at a time. They're actually turning on two pixels in the same area, which is boosting up that brightness. One of my takeaways from using this was, boy, I, I would love to have an iPad mini pro, something that uses this screen, but is in the mini form factor is like an outside sketchbook that you could take with you. That would be cool. Probably never going to happen, but would be nice. The screen also gets dim enough oftentimes with OLED displays, at least the early OLED displays that Samsung was using on their tablets, they didn't get dim enough in like low light situations. They were just too bright. So if you use them for reading at night, it was too much. They have fixed that with the latest iteration of their tablets. Their tablets actually go all the way to black when you change the dimmer here. But this iPad Pro does look really good still in low light situations. So that's something that I've seen a lot of people kind of trip over that they got right here. The other big update to the iPad itself is this M4 processor. I've seen some of the benchmarks popping up on Twitter. I'm not a benchmark guy, so I'm not big into this, but people say that they've been really impressed by what they're seeing. One of the things that this comes down to is what are you actually using the iPad for? And I'm not really using it for anything super processor intensive. The art apps that I'm using have worked well for generations now and they worked 
really well on the A series chips. All the M series chips are, are plenty. There's a lot of RAM here, eight gigabytes by default. If you get the one or two terabyte models, you can get 16 gigabytes. That increases the number of layers that you can use in drawing apps and, and that sort of thing. RAM becomes a really important element and there's plenty here. I've been using really, really large canvases like 4,000 by 6,000. Actually, it's a little more than that. And I have had no problems at all. I was checking out a Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite a few weeks ago and I had to cut that canvas into pieces just to draw on it for that review. That is not a problem here. I love drawing on this new iPad. If you're interested in drawing, but you don't know how to get into it, check out some of my videos over on my second channel or my Learn to Draw in 60 Days course. I've got a sale running right now. iPad 2024 discount code. Don't forget to use that on checkout. Sorry, not sorry for the promotion. I've been thinking about my workflow and how much of my workflow I can use on the iPad and how much has to go onto the desktop and how I tend to bounce between those two things. I use the iPad Pro kind of as a more of a companion device than my main device. But here I can jump into something like Affinity Designer and I can lay out my comics and do the word balloons in the text and all that fun stuff, but and then jump over to Procreate to do the actual illustration. Affinity Designer gets a little laggy when you have multi-page files when we're talking about illustration, and I prefer to draw on Procreate, just a me thing. The one thing that is missing from my workflow is the 3D. This is an area that's getting kind of interesting too, because ZBrush will be coming to these iPad Pros in the near future. There's another 3D app called Uniform that's in the works for the iPad iPad Pro as well. So there are some options that are starting to like get out there a pro level 3D software. That's really intriguing. Looking forward to testing that. The Apple Pencil Pro is the big update. This is the one thing that I need more time with. I've been using some of the beta apps for like Procreate Dreams, Procreate itself. Uh, there's some note taking apps and they take advantage of some of the new barrel features. You can squeeze the barrel. There's a haptic engine in the back that makes it feel like you're actually squeezing the pencil. If your iPad is off and you try squeezing it, you're gonna tell the Apple Pencil itself is rock solid, hard plastic, not squeezable. That haptic engine is like like messing with your head, making you think that you're actually squeezing it. It doesn't seem like that big a deal. It's just a nice touch. I'm curious to see if app developers are gonna take advantage of that haptic engine and use it in some of their apps to do some different things. Uh, we've seen Microsoft do this with their Slim Pen Pro. That pen has a haptics engine as well. When you draw with it, it like shakes a tiny bit, which gives the impression that you're drawing on a textured surface. Some apps have done that pretty well, other apps have overdone that, it kind of depends. It really depends on how well it's implemented. You don't do it quite right, and it just feels like your pen is shaking for no apparent reason. And I think some of the app developers were like, this is a neat trick. You have to notice that your pen is shaking. It's when it's subtle is when it really works well. Fresco has a pretty neat implementation of the barrel feature. When you squeeze it, it brings up your tools right there underneath your paintbrush. These are the same tools that are all on the side. But the iPad is so big that it's kind of nice having your brush size and your color and your smoothing and those sort of things right there under your pencil at all times. I keep having to remind myself when I was drawing in this, like, no, squeeze the barrel. This is actually useful. Stop going over to the other side of the screen to change your sizes. You can also dive into the settings, toggle this off, or have it do other things. This replaces the touch point on the Apple Pencil 2. I always just turn the touch point off on the Apple Pencil 2 because it was just too easy to tap. So that alone makes this a far better feature than it was on the old Apple Pencil. There's also barrel rotation. So when you turn the pencil, it can turn the rotation of your brush. So we've seen some cool implementations of that. I've been testing that out in Procreate kind of neat. You can get like instant smoke effects, kind of nice there. I don't use the front facing camera much on the iPad, but they have changed the orientation from the top of portrait mode. So now it's at the top of the landscape mode. A lot of people are gonna like that. So you don't get that like side view weird camera angle when you're using an iPad. What about the thinness? That's the other thing a lot of people are talking about. Honestly, I didn't notice it that much. Uh, I'm keeping this in a portfolio case. I have a white portfolio case. I would love to have a different color the iPad Pro doesn't have many options in terms of the color of the portfolio case. The iPad Air does. Got a nice denim blue one for that. Here it's white or black, and I think there's a bluish color that you can get. Black's probably gonna fade too much. The white's already getting dirty on me. So I'll probably settle for the blue. The portfolio case by default has always been at a pretty good drawing angle. They've changed it a little bit. They've repositioned some of the magnets now. So when you stand up the iPad, it's almost at like a 90 degree angle, but you can shift it up a little bit and actually pivot it back, pivot that angle back. There's also a new magic keyboard cover. This makes the iPad feel more laptopy. First of all, it more than doubles the width of the iPad. So it feels significantly heavier too. They've added uh, an aluminum 
drum around the key casings so that it feels more sturdy. And again, that's probably a big reason why it feels more like a laptop when you're using it that way. A lot of people are gonna like that. The big update there though is the keyboard. It used to have one of those like flappy keyboards that you see on Windows PCs. Now it has a similar keyboard with the haptics engine that you'll find on a MacBook. So that's a huge upgrade. I said flappy, I meant like diving board keyboard where you can only press the bottom half of it, not the top half. Anyway. Huge improvement there. So those are my first impressions of the iPad Pro. What do you think? What would you like to see in my review? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.